I'm just taking a break because my back is killing me. I've been sieving gravel. So the last couple of weeks I've been um, doing an awful lot of kind of wear and tear repairs in the garden. So I rubbed down and repainted my pallet planter. I've repaired my compost bin and painted that. Um, and now I'm sorting out my gravel near the bird feeder and um, the bird bath. I've actually moved the bird feeder. Let me turn this around and show you. So I've moved it back to where it originally was some years ago because um, when it was the other side, when it was over kind of here, um, a lot of the seed and that was spilling over into the pond, which was not doing the pond any good. It was adding nutrients to the pond and sludge and and I've got a lot of blanket weeds, so that, that's another job I'll talk about later. So now I've um, moved the bird feeder. It was time to have a look at the gravel below it because over the years where there's been so much spillage from all the seed and that, that's rotted down and also from the fat balls there's been a collection of the kind of suets built up and clumped all the um, gravel together into a hard lump it's like baked into, it's a bit like they have in the sewers, like a fat berg. That's exactly what it was like. So I've broken it all up. I've given it a good sieve. I've got a bit more to do, but I'm kind of lifting out all the um, soil that's built up that shouldn't be there. So really jobs like this are quite important to me because at the end of the day, um, my kitchen garden is actually my back garden. It's what I see from the house it's what I see when I'm sitting in my summer house and I want it to look nice but also I think if you keep on top of all structural jobs and that everything lasts longer and my main motivation obviously is to grow food um, to eat well but also it's it's got to look nice so I'm still hardening off all my beans, nasturtions and now the sweet corn. So these are developing really well. But I've still got five pots that have never come up. They've been sown twice. So um, I've bought some fresh seed. I've just sown another five. And they've got a few weeks to catch up. But I think with the beans, they might be going out this weekend. And if there is a hint of any frost, I can put fleece on them. But they're getting too big for the pots now. With the potatoes, I earthed these up again a couple of days ago. Put about another four or five inches worth of compost and horse manure and they're poking through already. Look at these. So the first lot of broad beans are doing really well. Looking forward to harvesting those when the time comes. in the early morning sun. I think they could really do with a good downpour. But they're putting on growth. Leeks are fattening up. There's some rust. Really I should lift them. Sometimes you just have to live with the problems. I've just discovered that my garlic has got black fly. So 
So I've just sprayed my garlic um, to get rid of the black fly. Um, I don't really want black fly in my garden, especially as my broad beans are growing because they get on that and it's really difficult to get rid of them. So you need to get in there early and any young shoots just pinch out the tips because it's the fresh young shoots that they like. And there's not many predators at the moment. I've not really seen any ladybirds yet, and certainly no hoverflies, which are, and I think lacewings as well, are natural predators. So the only way to combat it really is just to do daily checks on plants. So really there's more types of maintenance in the garden than just DIY. So I've already spoke about um, structures and maintaining those. You need to maintain your plants as well. So I'm going to take you around the garden because there's other plants that are being um, infested with these aphids and aphids spread disease now I don't want to bang on about it but the last few years my garden's been plagued with mosaic virus it's a disease that you can spread by touch brushing past it with your clothes going from plant to plant with tools it's just really really easily spread um, and you have to disinfect everything, wash your hands constantly. But once a plant's got mosaic virus, it's doomed. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no cure. So I'm trying to be really on top of it this year with the aphids. So let me show you. This is the aquilegia and this is covered in green fly. This is the rosebuds. This is evidence of aphids. So this is absolutely covered in buds and this is going to be completely colonised if I don't keep on spraying. So some interesting facts about aphids. Where there's aphids, you'll generally find there's also ants, and ants tend to farm the aphids and protect them against the predators. Now you might ask yourself why. Aphids feed off the sap of plants, and that is what damages and weakens your plants because they, they pierce the stems to extract it. And then in turn they excrete that substance or part of that substance um, and what is left is um, a sticky sweet substance that the ants favour and it's what we call honeydew. It's easy to identify honeydew because if you look on the leaves where aphids have been they tend to have a sheen to them um, by the sticky substances. So if you do have an infestation, there's several things you can do. The first thing you can do is if you find there's an ant's nest, you can get rid of that to start with because once the ants have gone, then the aphids haven't got their natural protectors and the pred predators can then step in. And the second thing you can do, if it's something like this rose bush, you can get your hose pipe and put it on spray and just give it a blast. Um, and that will wash them all off and they'll disappear because they won't like the cold water. Um, you can't really do that on smaller plants because there's a danger that you'll actually damage your plants by the pressure. So therefore, you, if you mix up um, a soapy solution, um, not really washing up liquid, I know people do use it, but it's not a good idea. But if you get something like um, a Castile type um, liquid soap and dilute that in water and spray it that's um, a good way of getting rid of them but I know Jeff Hamilton used to always rave about um, liquid seaweed 
um, and I've been doing some reading today and it does seem to work so if you make up a spray of the liquid seaweed and spray it on your plants on a regular basis it tends to stick to the plants and changes the taste which in itself is a deterrent for the aphids um, so really you want to get rid of the aphids because they are going to damage your plants and they do spread disease so I'm on the attack <laughs> Oh wow, 